This guide is an overview on how to make sure that your simple web pages are optimized for Google. It's not a, a full list of things to do, but it's a good start, a good, a good thing to do if you've got a new website or um, you've had a website for a while and you want to make sure it's not losing traffic unnecessarily and that it can be ranked higher using these tools or, or these methods of doing things. So I've created this page here, which I'm going to open with Dreamweaver. Um, and as you can see, this is what the code looks like, but before we get hurt up on this, this is what the page looks like. So there are certain elements on the site. Now the most important thing with SEO is making sure that you've got the right words on a page. So the way you can evaluate that is if we use the keyword tool. So if we search Google for keyword tool, we can use this to evaluate what keywords we use. So let's say I want to have a page about baked beans. We can use this to see search terms similar to baked beans, how much they've been searched for and how competitive they are. Now competitive terms, your page needs to be seen to be more important by Google in order to be ranked highly for it. But competitive pages generally get a lot of searches. So if your page is about healthy recipes, your page would have to have lots of links to it in order to be ranked highly for the words healthy recipes. It may not be a good thing for a new site to target this, even though it's getting a lot of searches. An alternative strategy is to actually pick the lower competition words that have a lot of searches. So it seems to me like recipes are would be a good would be a good word to search for. So I'm going to copy that. Uh, but you've got to use your own initiative with this and if you decide that you want to use can you freeze baked beans on your site and have have your site about that you want to include those words in those order in that order on your site so the next thing as well is there's a tool called insights and this shows you trending words so if i typed in baked beans here 2010 in the uk this will show you the trend for search terms um, over time and it shows you rising searches that people are looking for that are related to what you want so beans on toast is being searched for 50 percent more um, so you might want to target this if that trend is going to increase and likewise you can see alternative search search terms that are related to what you've searched for so you may want to use these words on your page instead so let's have a look at the actual page code itself so like I said this this directly relates to this page and then what you can see here is that we've got baked beans in the title, tasty baked beans. You want to make sure that this title tag isn't too long but contains keyword rich words. So if I search for baked beans, often that title is what appears here. So it's good to have that title written in a way that is not only keyword rich but it's going to be relevant to what the user searches for. The next thing is this description is often this here. So again, you want to write, think of it like a Twitter status. You don't want to write any more than what a Twitter status would contain. Fill it full of keywords related to what you've searched for um, and have it written in a way that is going to be relevant to the user. So you don't just want to stuff, stuff word after word. You want to write, say, oh, baked beans in Birmingham for you. Have you had issues with baked beans? So that because the customer is only going to click on your site if they think it's relevant to them. How many times have you browsed the, the descriptions on links, decided it's not relevant for you and moved on? So that's the next thing of, in terms of capturing people. Now the keyword meta tag has been less important over, over recent years but the important thing to notice is that it still does contain keywords um, so it's still an important thing that you can use to try and increase your ranking. Again, just put keywords in it that are relevant to your search term. Keep it fairly short. Um, it's better to stick to like under 20 at least keywords in here, otherwise if you spam it with keywords they'll just get ignored. On your page you've got a header section. All your meta tags should go within this header section and they should not be outside of it. Head is generally for meta information like this that won't be seen by the customer even though you know it's displayed at the top of the page up here and the body title is generally what's shown on the page so there are ways of structuring content within the body um, there are h tags 
that are supposed to identify headings, there are p tags for identifying paragraphs, ul and li for list elements, and img for images. There are other tags, but these are, these are really important ones. It makes sense to have a h1 tag right at the top of the page with words in it that represent what the page is about, pure and simple, just like that. So similar to the title tag, you want to write it, write it um, in a way that's filled with keywords. You've got your h2 tags that will be dotted around the page. So let's say you've got a page about beans and you've got one section on that page about flavours and another about colourings. Rather than just write flavours in that h2 tag, write baked bean flavours. It makes that h2 tag a bit more specific and it can help in the search terms. Um, the and amp tag, that is just an and symbol but using HTML code. If you write an and symbol on its own, it will still appear but your page won't validate properly. So I'm going to go into that in a minute but that's something to look out for. And then h3 tags is just a less important heading. Blocks of text to go within p tags, p, paragraph, it's no, it's no surprise that Google's going to look in this for block text. Um, if it replaces your description up here by itself, it's likely to replace it with content here. Next you've got your list. Now lists can be important for primary navigation. So rather than just have lots of links like this all next to each other, it's good to contain it within a list structure because it almost shows that you know those links are related to each other. And if you see here, here's the list. And now you can you can style this list so that it, it's not all on each line and they're next to each other and there's no bullet points, so don't worry about that. The next thing is, um, so imagine this is navigation. We've got li, which is a list tag. So within this li is the list item. And then you've got an a tag here that ends here that is the link. So you've got your link in here, so this might be scorchoff.com, and then you've got your text here. It's very common to write click here, or visit this URL, or the URL name in this title. That's not a good thing to do. Google looks at the text associated with a link as being related to the link. Um, so it may look at my page having link to this page having link to Scorchsoft and see, ah, oh, this this person has linked to it as Web Development Birmingham, therefore that page is about Web Development Birmingham. If you can get lots of people linking to you and having links on their site that are structured like this, this will dramatically increase your ranking for Website Development Birmingham. And like, likewise, you want to make sure that any external links from your site are using words that are relevant to that page. It's good practice to do and I, I highly recommend that you do it. Yeah, so avoid click here. Um, backlink name is important. The next thing are image tags. Now images can be wrapped around links, as you know, you can have links that are images. Um, and if we actually look at our page, those two image tags on the in the text are creating these two images here that I've taken off of the Scorchsoft page. The reason I mention them is it's so important to have an alt tag. This alt tag is important not only for accessibility, but for for your search engine optimization. It tells people what the image is about and it can actually, your alt tag is normally what dictates what is searched for by Google Images. So it's likely that these images, so let's say I type, do type, for mo type moon in, you'll probably find that if I visit the, pe if I inspect the element on the page, you normally find that it's got an alt tag that's related to moon. This one hasn't, but if you notice the name of the image is moon, which is why this one's being picked up. Um, so alt tags. The next thing is I've got Scorchsoft logo written in here. So I've not tested this, but if I search for Scorchsoft logo, you'll probably find that that comes up because of that. There you go. First result comes up is the Scorchsoft logo, and that is because it's got Scorchsoft logo as the as the image name itself. So very important to make sure that keywords are within the image name and keywords are within the alt tag. The next thing is you want to make sure your pages are validating. So if I search for HTML validation, this is essentially a tool that checks that your pages have been written correctly. So you can type in the address of your URL here. It does it on a page by page basis, not a site by site basis by the way. Um, for the moment I'm going to do by direct input. and I'm going to copy and paste the entire page in. 
and it tells me whether my page validates. So fortunately I've written this page in a nice way, it validates nicely. I talked about the and tag earlier. You'll notice if I copy and paste this entire page having changed that and tag, you'll notice it won't validate. Let's see. And it gives you issues as to why at the bottom. So it's telling me here I've used an unescaped ampersand and it's told me what I should use. So I need to use this one instead. Paste that in and my page will now validate. You want to make sure you've got a doc type on your page. Um, this is quite standard. If if in doubt, just copy this doc tab. I'm probably going to link to this with, alongside the video. You want to be using at least XHTML transitional. I talked about keywords in titles. It's also really important to have keywords within the page name. So this is this file is actually represents that page that I've created. Um, if I was to open it in Notepad, you'd see that it contains this text. You want to have keywords split by hyphens that are relevant to your page within the title. If you remember I showed you the image moon that had keywords in the page name and that's why it was listed. Same reason with your web pages. Keyword rich content in there will help your rankings. Um, the important thing is, is if you've currently got established pages though and you change the name of them this could break links to your site so you want to be a bit careful with changing existing pages and maybe focus on making sure new pages are written like this. There are ways of of getting around this using HT access rewrites but I'm not going to go in that today. You want to make sure your website has been submitted to Demos. This is an open source directory that points at your site. You can tell it you essentially find a category within Demos. So I'm just searching really randomly. And then once you're in here there's links at the bottom and you can submit your site oh. so you can up upload a record or suggest a URL once you're within a category so find the right category and submit your page that can help your ranking it can be good to submit to lots of different directories as well in order to get links to your page to increase your ranking if you go to Scorchsoft um, how to improve your SEO free I've given a list of uh, things you can do to increase your SEO like submitting to different directories and things like this. Next thing is you actually want to add your URL to Google. It might find you itself but it always makes sense if you've got a new site to make sure you've added it to Google. So literally all you do is search for add URL for Google and find this and put it in. If you want to have a better tool to be able to edit your pages with um, I recommend Notepad++. So if you search for Note pad plus plus first link you can install this it's it's for windows um, i'm not sure if it comes on mac as well um, either way this is a good tool for windows in order to make sure that you can edit this page so if i edit this with notepad plus plus this is what you see the benefit with it really is that it colors your text to make it easier to read so you can see here it's colored the attributes of a of each tag differently just makes it a lot easier to edit and keep control of oh before i finish often you'll get tags like this um, if you notice there's an image tag here there's a list tag here that has also got a closing list tag some tags like image br is another one do not have a close tag they're literally one tag on their own these tags always should end with a forward slash arrow like this. If you don't have that, your page won't validate. That's just a, a small thing. So in this tutorial, I have covered picking the right keywords, meta information for the page, title tags, lists, HTML validation, image tags, how to add your URL to Google, Demos, having keywords within the right places on your page, including the page name and image names, and tools you can use to edit your page. So this has been a tutorial on search engine optimization by Scorchsoft.com, website development, website design, and web application development in Birmingham. <laughs>